Welcome to Worship, St. John's Lutheran Church and Friends. It's good to be with you on this first Sunday of Lent. I just have one announcement primarily about our Lenten journey this year. We are going to be reading together the book, Let Your Life Speak by Parker Palmer. And we are going to do that um, kind of by topic by topic uh, each week. So here's how we're going to do that. We will have a Zoom together at 2 o'clock or 6.30. I will do a little teaching time and then uh, split you off into smaller groups for a small group discussion around some questions. So if you are interested in doing that, please check our website and indicate to us that you would like to be a part of which one, the 2 o'clock or the 6.30, and we will send you the Zoom link to be a part of that. It is good to be with you today. Also, if you are watching and you would like to come on over to church, we are going to be doing Mardi Gras today. I know that's after Lent starts, but uh, weather dictated this for us. So come and join us at the fire pit. Uh, we'll do a little worship time. There will be sledding. There will also be hot dogs and cookies and chips and some hot chocolate. So come and be a part of some fellowship if you would like today. With that, let's take a breath and let's prepare our hearts and our minds for worship today. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's words never fail us. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the power and the wisdom of God. Your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. children of God, I am so glad you've joined us for worship today. Today you're going to hear stories that you're pretty familiar with. Brenda's going to read the story about Noah's Ark and how God saved Noah's family from the floodwaters as those floodwaters washed the earth clean. Noah's family was saved through those waters. And you're going to hear the story about Jesus' own baptism, where Jesus was baptized and God said, oh, this is my son. I love him. And you might even remember a story about 
Moses needed, leading the Israelites out of slavery and they came to a sea and God parted that sea so that they could walk through it and be saved. Water is so powerful in our faith. You, when you were baptized, were baptized with water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and you were marked with the cross of Christ forever. You baptized beloved children of God are loved by God, and God knows your name, and God loves you. So today, as you hear these stories, I want you to think about how important water is, and that when we, when we take a tubby, water washes us clean. And when we're down by the river, we see rocks that are washed over and smoothed out all their rough edges by water. And someday soon, we will see sprouting trees and grass turning green from the water that will fall from the sky. Water is powerful. You, child of God, were washed in that same water. And that's why we blow bubbles at baptisms, to remind us that we are washed clean in the water and welcomed as God's own child. Will you pray with me this morning? Hello, God. Thank you for the gift of water. The water that we can drink when we're thirsty. The water we can bathe in when we're dirty. The water we can put on plants to help them grow. And the living water from you. Amen. I am so excited you joined us for worship, and I hope I'll see you outside after this around 10 o'clock. We'll do a Mardi Gras service, and then we will play in the snow because it'll be warm, and we will have hot dogs, and we will have treats, and it will be lovely. I hope you join us. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 9. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I established my covenant with you, that never again shall, I, shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And when the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh, when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all the flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh is on the earth. We will read Psalm 25 responsibly. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for the goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. 
All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in the former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Our gospel for this first Sunday in Lent comes from Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. As you may have been figured out about me already, I like words. I like individual words. I like how words work together. I like thinking about concepts. I like comparing and contrasting words. So today, I want us to think about four words in particular. And they tie with each of the readings for today. Hopefully at the end I can wrap them up in a nice little bow and it'll make sense. So the first word I want us to think about today is relationship. We have relationships with a lot of different things. I had to get a new phone this week. I had a relationship, a seven-year relationship with my old phone, and now I have a new relationship with a new phone, and I'm figuring out what that means. Yep, we can have relationships with inanimate objects. But more often, we think about relationships in, 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 with other living beings, with nature, with the trees and the plants, with our dogs and cats and cattle and horses, and certainly with other people. And we have a relationship with our God. We use that word pretty frequently in our everyday life. Relationship. Word number one. Word number two is the word contract. So a contract is actually a legal document. It's between two people, has a, usually a lot of legal ease in it, and it has to do with typically providing a service or a purchase of a service. So you have a contract with someone like, say, here in this space in this last year, this space has been completely redone and, and uh, renovated and turned 180 degrees, for those of you who aren't familiar with this space. So there was a contract with the contractor. 
which said that we here at St. John's would do this, we would pay you this much, and you, contractor, would do this. It's a legal binding document, and if one party doesn't do one of the two things, there are legal steps to remedy that. Sometimes you have to take those steps all the way to a court of law. So, relationship, contract. The third word I want us to think about today is the word promise. Promise is a one-sided thing, typically. It is saying, I promise that I will be on time. I promise that I will do a particular act. I promise I will bring the hot dogs for Mardi Gras. I promise I will clean up after myself. I promise. We use those words actually kind of frequently. And we may not use the actual word promise, but I'll make a statement like, I, I will do that. Yep, I'll do that. Sometimes we hold true to our promises, and sometimes we don't. There's no legal recourse, typically. It's neither necessary nor is it very easy to prove in the court of law. So, the word promise. Relationship, contract, promise. And the last word I want us to think about today is the word covenant. A covenant is something that demands something from both sides. It's not legal, but it is something deeper than a promise. It says, I will do this and you will do that. So, in the church world, one of the biggest covenants that we live with as people of God is God saying, I will be your God and you will be my people. It is a covenant. It is something that it goes really deep into the marrow of people it's into the way they act and they think and they believe because this God comes to us over and over again saying, I will be your God and you will be my people. And nothing can change that. Nothing ever can change that. It is just simply true. Contract, promise, covenant are actually all wrapped up in the bow of the word that I started with, the word relationship. So we have this story today. If you've ever been in my office, you will know that one of my favorite Bible stories is the story of Noah. And it's my favorite, not because of the cute little animals that go off in a boat, boat, a big boat. It's not because it's easy to depict in an artistic way. It's because God asks plain old ordinary people to do extraordinary things for phenomenal results. So God comes to this man, this ordinary man named Noah, and says, I want you to build an ark, and he gives all kinds of specifications about that, and then what he's supposed to do with the ark. And so then Noah does all that, even to the ridicule of people around him. They get to float in the water for 40 days and nights as it rains, and then they have to wait for the water to dissipate. And then we get to the story of today, to that section or chapter of the story today. 
where God looks around and says, huh, I don't think I'm going to do that again. And God makes a covenant and says, nope, not going to do that again. You are my people and I am your God and I'm going to show you that I truly, I'm going to give you a sign that says, I really, really not going to do this again. In the story, they call it a bow. What you and I probably call it is a rainbow. It's a sign in the sky. It's a vivid, visual reminder to us that God has claimed and named us that God has made a covenant to us that's deep. And that God always makes the first move, saying, I will be your God, and you will be my people. Now, let's live in relationship together. It's beyond a contract. It's beyond a promise. It's a way of life. It's not for a particular time period. It's not for a particular situation. This covenant that God makes with us goes on and on and on. Throughout the centuries, throughout the generations, this God comes to us and says, I will be your God, and you will be my people. Yesterday, right now, and forevermore. That covenant is precious. That covenant means everything. That covenant means that we have something to do in this as well. That we are called to be God's people. And the sign that we use is the sign of the cross on our brow and our breast that's placed there at our baptism. But it's placed there every day. Martin Luther says we need to remember that daily. Oh, we may not be able to see it, but when we make that sign, we can feel it. And it is that tactile, it is that sense of, yes, we belong. That this God who says, I will be your God and you will be my people, means it. Thanks be to God for that covenant that comes from deep within and fills us with what we need each and every day to be God's people in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>
during our Lenten journey, we will be using the Nicene Creed as our creed of confession, our confession of faith. So I ask us with boldness to confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Pray for the ministry of the whole church, for the well-being of creation, for newborn children, for our oceans and forests, and specifically for the preservation of the Arctic Reserve as global warming reduces their habitat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace and justice in the world, we pray that the fragile peace be maintained following the recent transfer of presidential power. We pray for those who have lost family members and that justice will prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor, oppressed, sick, mourning, lonely, and others who are oppressed, for those who cannot see friends or family in this time of COVID, we pray for those who have compromised immune systems who are more at risk. We specifically pray for the Uyghur Muslims in China who are being taken to concentration camps and forced to go against their religion. We pray for those who are living alone and those who are homeless during this cold spell and year of disease. We pray for those in hospice care, including Rich and Anna. We pray for Roger and his battle with cancer. We pray for Anne who is living with ALS. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, people who struggle with mental health issues, especially as they are isolated from others during this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For St. John's and for Oregon, we celebrate going back to school and pray for families who are struggling with their transition and the related mental health issues. We pray that our community stays in good health so schools can remain open and the family of St. John's can gather in person for worship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who died due to COVID and police brutality. For those who have died, specifically Richard Goss, Barbara Newhouse's cousin Kathy, Jen's friend Hans, and families who have not been able to say goodbye to loved ones because of the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in this time of hardships, there are still positives. We thank you, God, for accompanying us through them all. Amen. As you are joining us at home, I encourage you to get some bread or crackers, some wine or some grape juice, so you too can join in this meal of Jesus. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, Wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. And on the night before he died, our Lord and Savior took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. 
Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and you are all welcome here, for the gifts of God are free. As you take your bread, know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take your wine, know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, give strength and peace to you today and into your life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have filled, fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. Amen.